of the 23 teams that won the Super Bowl since 2000, one started two and three, the 0 1 Patriots, eight started three and two, 10 started four and one, but only four started out five and 0. Oh. The thesis mm. is a 49ers or Eagles championship is far from assured. So we figured, okay, for this week's power rankings, let's look outside of the top five favorites to win the Super Bowl. Let's look after the 49ers, Chiefs, Eagles, Bills, and Dolphins. Can we find value in the Super Bowl winning market outside of those top five teams? Paul, I think our Jags need to relocate to London. 2-0 and in London, 0-2 yeah. when they're not in London. I mean, it's crazy. They have been clicking on all cylinders right now. Let's hope that they can keep it going because I thought – that the Jags kind of, you know, underperformed the season offensively, but now they seem to be clicking on all cylinders. Finally, Calvin Ridley, ATN, they they're more involved. I couldn't even get to five by omitting the top five, which I would would argue that you could find value in that top five still, even though they are the shortest numbers on the board. But I'll start with number three. Number three is where I went, and I went with the Bengals, and I think that's a what a big what if. And I'm really surprised that I, I'm the only one that has the Bengals on the list. I thought they were going to be very, very popular based on the idea that maybe Joe, Joe Burrow is back. And look what he did with Chase uh, this past week and trusting on a Rumo to figure things out defensively. But at 32 to 1, what is that number if they take down the Seahawks this weekend? And just having an elite quarterback in the 30s, I thought that brings a lot of value. And just based on the, the open we hear every day, may shock a lot of people i put the lines at 18 even though that number is shorter than i'd like like I, i'm just thinking about what are the chances they're the one seed like we threw that out there yesterday mm -hmm. and a bet that i even think is better than 18 to 1 to win the super bowl is the lines are 10 to 1 for the one seed they have the easiest remaining schedule in the nfl easiest remaining schedule they could very well be undefeated next up we got the seahawks here's some value 41 to 1 the buy came at a good time for them but take a look at their schedule seattle has a rough stretch in my opinion coming up so uh they've got to get things going but this is a seattle team that i think kind of going back to our baseball conversation if they get it into the playoffs i think they could be a team that could do something and maybe you don't want to face right especially Pete Carroll um I trust him as a head coach and his experience come playoff time here's the best part of all I don't match up with any of these my five are completely different when it comes to finding Super Bowl value and the okay. whole exercise for me was okay let me look at my power rankings let me look at where these teams are in terms of the pecking order in odds and let's see where I have a higher power ranking and a better overall number than, say, what the market is suggesting. And so we're going to get some weird teams. We're going to get some rather unusual arguments. So brace yourselves. Let's enjoy this roller coaster together as a family. And we start with number five, the Las Vegas Raiders. It was oh Jacoby Myers, <laughs> not Devontae Adams, that helped get this passing attack going. That one-two punch. It is what? underrated, and Max what? Crosby can do some great things, especially What's when this D-line uses enough stunts to prevent this O-line from dominating him. Am I alive right now? No, you're not. Raiders you're dead. I'm dead. Aaron's dead. You heard it. You're you're dead. Whole show. Whole show has just been nuked. The Rams. Texans. They're my number four oh. team here. They have already played the second toughest schedule, lest we not forget that they have gone up against the 49ers already. They've gone up against the Eagles already. They faced the Seahawks and won that contest. And despite having these really tough defenses they've gone up against, this offense is still a lot of fun to watch. That has to mean something, right? Number one, the team with the most Super Bowl value outside of the top five is none other than the New York Jets. The Jets have the most ah. value outside the top yeah. five because they need a quarterback yeah. if they get a quarterback this team is very different and the market has not suggested that they are going to acquire someone to replace zach wilson it is also possible that if the jets do make the playoffs at some point aaron Rodgers could return keep that timeline in mind folks 
it's not so much that you're betting on the Jets to do much in the regular season, but once they sneak in, if Rodgers does return, they will be a tough out. So to fulfill the assignment given to me, Jets, Vikings, Chargers, Rams, Raiders, done. I like Baltimore out in, in London. Um, I think you're getting a, a spread here that is looking at the, the score in the Steelers Ravens game. And that was one of the most, one of the most impressive 10 point offensive outings I think I've ever seen. I mean, you know, you may have seen the discourse. Lamar Jackson was our highest graded passer this week and they scored 10 points. He had zero touchdown passes and one interception, but they were charted with seven drops, which is the third most in a game since 2017 per our charting. Um, they were moving the ball very effectively. They should have had 28 points in the first half and they just could not figure it out. Two drops in the end zone from Mark Andrews and Rashad Bateman. Two more drops on throws 20 plus yards downfield. One to Nelson Aguilar, I think also would have been a touchdown. So the underlying fundamentals for them are so much stronger than their performance last week. And I still just don't like Tennessee. Um, you know, I mean, still one of the worst coverage units in the NFL. And their offensive line's a problem. I think Mike, uh, Mike McDonald is going to dial up his sim pressures and stunts and all the stuff that he does up front uh, and wreak havoc as always. So that's one. My favorite play of the week, though, is a long teaser. Um, it's the Houston Texans and the Washington Commanders. Uh, Six-point teaser you get, I think, Houston up to 7.5 and, uh, and, the, and the Commanders right now up to 8.5. I mean, for Houston, you're getting a better quarterback at home plus, plus money. And, and, look, the Saints probably are a better team overall, but – when I get a better quarterback at home, plus you know, plus one and a half, I love it. And then you know, with with Washington, this isn't guaranteed to happen again. But their defense is obviously playing very poorly right now. Last year through Week Five, they were 27th in EPA per play, and then from Week Six to the end of the season, they were fourth. And again, there's no promise that happens again. But Jack Del Rio's defense, for whatever reason, they have the most diverse coverage play in the entire NFL. Like they play 10% or more of Cover zero, cover one, cover two, cover four, uh, quarters, uh, cover six. Like they're very, and, and I think maybe there's some, some growing pains there, but Chase Young had 11 pressures against the Bears. They get the mini buy to figure some things out. So long answer short there, Ravens minus four, uh, the Houston-Washington six-point teaser. Just the idea of which conference you think is most likely to get two wins. Joe, that's such a good question, and you're right. In the past, it's been SEC's the default answer, maybe the Big Ten, um, as we saw last year. I'll be honest, Joe, I really don't know. If I'm looking at my <laughs> most deserving rankings right now, I've got Oklahoma number one, Florida State two, Ohio State three, Texas is still number four in the most deserving, Alabama five, Louisville six, North Carolina seven, Georgia eight, Ole Miss nine, Washington ten. There's your top ten. But if we look at the chances to make the CFP, Oklahoma, Georgia, Florida State, Ohio State, those are your top four, Oregon, Michigan, Penn State, Texas, North Carolina, Washington, all those teams in there too. I could see a scenario. It all depends. The answer is it depends on how the other conference races play out. I could see a scenario where Georgia and Alabama both get in. I could see a scenario where you have two teams out of the Big Ten hmm. East, <laughs> out of the three of them, get in. I could see a scenario where you have two teams out of the Pac-12, out of the three of them, get in. You could see a scenario where Texas and Oklahoma get in. It's less likely, but still possible, maybe, that Florida State and Louisville both get in, maybe. Huh. I mean, they don't play each other in the regular season. If Louisville runs the table, Florida State runs the table, they both make it to the ACC championship game. And then, you know, let's say Louisville wins that by a point and Florida State has some good wins on the resume. Their only loss is to undefeated ACC champ Louisville, who's got some good wins. Like, you could see a case for almost every conference. It all depends on how these other ones play out. So I know that's – I'm copping out. That's not an answer. But the, right. the fact of the matter is we need to see how these games are played because right now every conference has a chance to get two in and every conference has a chance to be left out entirely. It's, it's an awesome year of college football. So I had Braves futures, uh, you know, and I stand to win much more on Braves futures than I would on Phillies futures. I'd have bit the Phillies to win the Anno pennant right before the playoffs. So I'm, I'm kind of in a spot now where – uh, I'm looking to hedge against the Braves at break-even prices. This is the one series in the playoffs where I thought a team could take them out. I said on this show, you know, before the playoffs, winner of Braves Phillies is going to win the World Series. I still stand by that. Now that I can, you know, I project the Phillies about minus 120 in this game, so I don't see value on either side of the money line. Again, another one where I'd lead to the under, make this total about 8.7. So if I get an under 9, minus 110, under 9, probably minus 105 I'd prefer before first pitch. That's where I'm going. I'm going to the under. Um, but it's as of right now, I only have the 12 bet on the Phillies money line. And 
if you have Braves futures and Phillies futures, if you stand to win more on Braves futures like I do, I think this is your last opportunity potentially to hedge out on the Phillies at plus money. So taking Phillies plus 135 on the series line, I don't think is a bad approach. That's about where I projected it. Uh, they should have the pitching advantage, certainly today, but I think even in a game five scenario, you know, with, with Wheeler potentially coming back or game four, what have you. So it, it, two of the final three games in the series, they should have the pitching advantage. Uh, and, you know, I think everywhere else these teams are fairly comparable. It's just these Atlanta bats finally seem like they're awake. And, you know, it, it's a sleeping giant. And once they woke up, it almost seemed like, you know, in that game, like the moment they got a run, you're like, oh boy, here they come. And sure enough, they ended up coming back and winning. So, yeah, uh, we talked about like these offenses being asleep, but now that a team like the Braves are awake, they're obviously terrifying. But I, I don't project actionable value unless you are looking to allocate out of futures essentially on this game. 